Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Leslie Wyatt with SoftPro. Uh, believe it or not, we are on episode 23 of Saved You a Seat. Uh, don't know that we thought that it would still be going on at this point um, when we started it back last year, but we're really glad that you guys continue to join us and hopefully you get a lot out of the episodes. Um, today, we're gonna talk about configuration beyond implementation within SoftPro. So, I can promise you that you don't want to hear that information from me as I uh, am not the expert on it. So here in a moment, we are going to have Brandy Dutill with SoftPro and she is a config configuration team lead. So she knows all about it. But before I hand it off to Brandy, just a few reminders. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, if you would go ahead and just type them in the questions box, uh, should be to your bottom right, you might have yours on the left, but uh, your go-to webinar thing has a questions, you can hit the drop down and you can go ahead and ask questions. We will try and go ahead and get to as many questions as possible. If by chance we don't get to yours, no worries, we will include it in a follow-up or Brandy or, or somebody will reach out directly to you. So please don't hesitate to ask any questions. I, if by chance you have to step away or you really like this and you want to go back and look at it and share the information that Brandy's going to go over today with other people in your office, we encourage you to do so and we will do a follow-up email within a couple of days of this webinar. And that follow-up email will include a link to this recording. You can also go back and view other recordings, I believe, on our <clears throat> website to our SoftPro blog. So with that, again, thank you to everybody. Um, that is joining us and I am going to go ahead and let Brandy steal the show here because she is your export <clears throat> and hopefully we get some good questions and with that Brandy it's all yours. Thank you Leslie. Um, okay good morning everybody and welcome again. As Leslie mentioned I'm Brandy Dutill. I am the configuration team lead here at SoftPro. Um, just a little quick about me. I did start with SoftPro as a user. I did closings in Arizona for 13 years, so I know exactly what you were going through, although times have clearly changed. Um, I did then came over to SoftPro as a trainer, and I did implementation for a time, and now I'm on the configuration team. My department handles configuration items for both implementation and post-implementation customers, and that is what we were going to discuss today configuration after and beyond implementation. Now, we know that during your initial implementation, you may not have the time to implement everything available up front. It is a huge undertaking to think of everything your company is gonna need all at once while learning a new software or version if you're transitioning um, to select from one of our classic editions. And maybe you aren't the person that was involved in the initial implementation and are wondering why things are set up the way they are or see room for improvement. Maybe you did get everything in that you thought you needed and just want to set up more efficiencies within the program now that you're using it, more familiar with it, um, and have had some time to get it under your belt. Or maybe you're even evolving your business model or taking on a new entity and expanding. Regardless, we do want you to know that there is life after implementation, and we want you to be familiar with the resources that are available to you um, to customize your software application. So whether you're a new implementation, implementation customer um, or have already been live for years, all of the services we're gonna discuss are available to you regardless of the version of SoftPro that you're on. Now, I do want you to understand though, that yes, the services are available, but um, to all, to everybody, excuse me, to all, um, but some of the application features that you are gonna see are version specific. So the version you're on is gonna control whether or not you can customize certain pieces. All right, so let's discuss some of these things um, that I see and work on in configuration so you can get an idea of what's available to you. Um, many of the features we're going to discuss are available in select version only. Um, select is just our platform that allows for the most customization. So for any classic users, please bear with me. We will touch on some things that are available to you as well. Um, now, you might already know about some of these options from your initial implementation, um, but again, just didn't prioritize them at the time or you thought you had it figured out and realized it needs tweaking. I always say, um, even when I was a trainer, that the very best testing for anything is a live environment. 
um, because there are just so many possible scenarios you could come across. You may also just have had no clue you could customize certain aspects of the program. So when working with customers that aren't sure where to start, I like to tell you to kind of make a list, maybe get a group of users together, gather their wish list and put all of that together so that we can powwow and find the best plan of action for you moving forward. I always like to tell people that if you can think it, chances are we can come up with a solution for it. So now you'll notice as I talk through your options that there is a lot of crossover within our teams that can assist you with any of these pieces. And that's actually true of all of our departments. On the configuration team specifically, uh, we actually get projects from all angles and we do a little bit of everything for everybody. We get them from support, implementation, consulting, or sales. So regardless of how you get things to us, we can always get you to the right team. Um, we're also tiny mini developers over in the configuration team. Um, and really the goal of the configuration team is to focus more on building out the items requested. However, we will never start a project with a customer without talking to them first to make sure we have defined the end goal and to make sure that you realize um, and have been able to weigh all of the options that are on the table before we proceed. Every customer's needs are different and the solution that makes the most sense for your company might not be the same as the company down the street. So let's actually talk about some of these additional implementation items and customizations we can hand, um, handle for you. A big one for customers is in general, creating better efficiencies for their users. Now that's a really broad topic and can meet a lot of different things. I like to start with, is your order being processed as efficiently as possible? If you have some holes or extra things users are doing that you think might be redundant, then we have several different options we can put in place for you. For example, did you know that you can customize my screens that your users see when producing and processing your orders? You can have several sets of screens. Um, these can be based on job function or even geographical area. And when I'm talking about my screens, these are in select and you'll see the screenshots are from select. Um, right now, you'll see the default soft pro screens as soon as you open up an order possibly, but you can actually customize those screens. Um, job function, like I said, is the one that makes the most sense and I see the most for customization. You know, I can have a set for my order entry people. I can have a set for my closers. I can have a set for my title people. Um, we can create as many custom my screen sets as you need and assign those to the specific groups of users that need them. And when we talk about custom, those customizing, excuse me, those screens, it means that I can rearrange the screens that my users see. So here's your, your default soft pro screen list out of the box, right? Um, I can rearrange them, I can rename them, um, and I can really make them flow the way my users process the order, right? So if express order entry just needs to see express order entry, order contacts, order information and status, and that's all my order entry people need to work with, they have their own sections, we've pared it down. Um, so like I said, I can also rename those screens to make more sense for my organization. I can omit certain screens from their view if they don't use anything on that screen. I can create brand new screens. Um, we see a lot with screens that feed directly to documents, right? Maybe I don't wanna have to pop through a million pop-ups on a document, we can put those fields on a screen and make that particular to an, a document that you're using and producing. Um, we can even change what you see on the screen when you open it. Um, maybe you, you know, don't need your brief legal on your order entry screen. Um, we can take that out to pare the screen down. So only the fields your order entry people, for example, need to fill out the, and begin the processing the order. This means that they aren't having to navigate through more than is needed for their particular job function, right? I only see the screens that I need. I only see what I need on it to get me through, saves me a lot of time and creates a lot of efficiency. Um, additionally, if there's information in an order that you want to capture and you don't currently have a field for that, we can create a custom field for you and put that on the screen for your users to fill out. Um, and when you talk about custom fields, those are 
typically referred to when we're talking about docs or reports. So they can be used to populate through docs and reports, but they can also just be used or in a combination be used for my screens um, so that your users see it right in front of them and we move it up on screen where it's visible to them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so here's an example of a screen set that um, a customer has completely customized the screens. They changed the order that the screens are in, the names of the screens, the fields on the screens, including custom fields. Um, so there really are a ton of possibilities when we're talking about my screens. Um, we control pretty much everything you see here, rearranging, not even not only the screen names and where you see them and even the sections, renaming and moving fields around so that you see them in the order that you need them in. Okay. Um, so truly with my screens, there is a lot that we can do. Another area we look at when we're talking about making your order processing more efficient is templates. Um, now, are your templates as efficient as you want them to be? We can help you pare down templates, you know, so maybe you've op you had open open season on templates and we have tons of templates and we don't need half of them and it's a lot of information. Um, we can help you pare down templates if you think you have too many to manage um, or even create smarter templates using things like formulas. Now, as we know, templates pre-populate data into our order. Um, when the order is created. I like to use a 60% rule. If you are entering the same information on a given type of order 60% or more of the time, then you maybe we can think about um, templating some of that information to save your users having to populate that field 100% of the time. So, um, you know, if so, let's do that. Typically, we use formulas for that. Formulas, and I missed a slide. See, we're going to cut those two templates out. It happens. Um, so formulas are stored in fields in your template. So um, they can be in fields in your template. They can be in lookup tables to make those fields work smarter in your order. Basically, a formula is used to auto-populate fields based on another item in your order. So your user doesn't have to manually enter that information if they've already put it somewhere else. Um, so this is an example of an order status formula. Here I have the order status updating as soon as my title or escrow status is updated, right? So I only have to fill out one status and it auto populates the other. Now that's a pretty basic example, um, but just about any field in your order can hold a formula to have it auto populate the information. Um, we build all sorts of formulas here from very basic to very complex throughout your select orders. Um, so if you see an opportunity in your setup to make populating fields smarter for your users, just ask us um, and we can discuss the best way to make that happen. In configuration, um, we can also work on creating customizations for you that we call custom order rules. Um, so custom order rules, did you know that they're available first of all? It's a relatively new concept in our world. Um, but we can populate fields uh, much like formulas do. Um, we can even generate custom errors and warnings for you. Um, we can make fields read only um, for a user or a particular group of users. We can lock out fields. So custom order rules do use coding that we can build out, um, like I said, to put in and make your program smarter. Um, Mainly I see um, you know, these types of implementation customizations used to ensure that nothing crucial um, is missing in the processing of the order or report or things that I need for reporting aren't getting missed. Um, excuse me. So in this example, you'll see I have a custom order rule here creating a custom error if my user forgets to mark a marketing source because I use my marketing source report and I need that. Um, so they will get that custom error until they fill out the marketing source and then the error will go away. So again, we like to put these in place and they, like I said, they do a lot of things. Um, you know, they'll populate fields just like those formulas did. Although sometimes a custom order rule is a better route to go than a formula, but that's all something we will figure out in our discussions 
of how to proceed when you present us with something you want to work on or have us work on. Um, but there really is a lot that we can do with sort of customizing some of the programming um, in Select. Um, so we do, you know, work with customers all of the time to figure out if a custom order rule could be useful to them. Now, the combination of streamlining your order processing using my screens, template efficiencies, um, and putting in stops for your users or pre-populating data for them using custom order rules or formulas can just lend to a general increased productivity across the board. Um, also, your users in many of those instances aren't having to manually input as much data as they were before. Um, now, streamlining and reviewing templates is available to all soft pro versions. Um, however, the my screens, custom order rules, and formula functionality I'm talking about are select specific. Um, another hot topic in select customization is workflow, meaning how can I best track the steps that my order need to go through, needs, excuse me, to go through to make sure that you don't miss anything. So tasking is a good way to do that. Um, to track your orders, you know, but did you know there are several, several different ways that tasking can get into your order? Um, tasks can be templated, they can be stored in lookup tables, or they can even auto populate um, by automation to add the task to or complete it even. Here in the configuration department, uh, we work a lot on putting these things in place and very closely with customers to set up new or tweak existing tasking workflows and automations. Um, we like to help make sure the process for the user is as smooth and smart as possible. Um, like I said, either using formulas um, to trigger the action in the task. So I could drop formulas in that says, hey, don't make this task due until the task above it is due. So we can use formulas with tasking um, or even automation to populate tasks or update tasks. So if you have something that needs to be done with tasking and your workflow and you want to put you know, those in place and have those be efficient, usually we'll end up with a combination of a little bit of all of those options. We might template a few of the tasks, we might put some in with formulas and make them smart um, so that they're sitting in the order, or we might even wait and have automation drop the task in or update the task when it needs to be. We, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we also don't sit down with customers to build out automations that don't have anything to do with tasking. Um, so if you don't know anything about automation in Select, Automation is used to populate data into your order based on something else that happens in the order. Um, so a user does their job as they would and let's say attaches a document to an order. And then for example, automation can come behind them and fill out a particular field in that order or populate a note in the order or complete a task um, in that order for them. So it's taking my user down from having step A and B to just, hey, you just attach your document, step B is gonna com be completed for you. Um, automation is a big conversation and is very robust. There are a lot of actions within an order that automation can perform. Um, it can even do a couple things outside of the order. It can run reports for you. Um, it can also auto accept or submit certain 360 transactions. Um, now, if you are not familiar, like I said, with automation, we are always happy to sit down with any customer that wants to explore automation and its possibilities, um, or we can help you put your ideas into place. So it's just another option available to you for maximizing the efficiency um, of your program. Additionally, in the configuration department, we frequently, frequently work with customers to review the setup from an SP admin perspective. Um, some of the things we can do are help you review and revamp permissions. You know, maybe you, permissions are huge. I don't know if you've ever looked at permissions, but there are a lot of available permissions um, in SoftPro. So we can review them with you, show you how to, you know, look and see what actually is permissionable, what permissions you have in place, and we can help you revamp those permissions. Um, we also do a lot with customizing document trees 
so your users only see the documents in the order that are applicable to them um, or to that profile um, and that structure. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also do a lot with revamping profile structures. Um, so we can make sure, maybe it's just, you wanna look at your profile structure and make sure you're using the privacy options in select um, and make sure those are being taken advantage of. We also see the need a lot with customers on taking on new companies um, or even expanding into new markets or states. It sounds like a straightforward undertaking to add a new profile, um, but there are a lot of things that go into deciding how the structure um, how to structure those. So do I need to keep certain users out of the new profile or is it okay for everyone to see everything? Um, do I need separate 1099ing for the new company or profile? Um, new order numbering, maybe new trust accounting or documents. Um, so there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of variations and options that can be set up um, as to the structure of your profiles. And these are things that we work with for, with customers um, to decide the best course of action for your needs and your company. So additionally, um, if you do find that you have a specific need and would like us to implement it, you can absolutely contact support and they will get your request to our configuration team to get a project opened, scoped out, quoted, and delivered. Um, but maybe you're thinking that's all well and good and a lot of information, but where do I start? Um, good question. There are actually many places you can just, you can start um, depending on your needs. The first one I wanna talk about is our consulting team. Um, so I have conversations all the time with customers who just wanna know what they don't know um, or they've been gathering and I wish I could do this list, right? Um, and haven't found the time to really dive into it or don't even know if what they're asking is possible. A lot of our customers did just maybe, like you said, like I said earlier, choose to implement the basics in the beginning and let their users get comfortable and now they're ready to take it to the next level. Um, but we just don't know where to start or what to prioritize. We also, like I said, see a lot of companies, as I mentioned, venturing into new states or purchasing another company and just need to talk through the different options for their scenario and figure out how to best get that into the software and can they do it or do they you know, need us to do it? If that sounds like your situation, um, then SoftPro Consulting Services are the best opportunity to explore those and help you develop a plan for moving forward. Um, all of our SoftPro Consultants are very high skilled professionals that are experts in the industry. Um, they also have experts and, or are experts, excuse me, in every version of our software. Um, they all have backgrounds in title and escrow and were previously part of our training department. So they do know their stuff and can kind of work through all of your needs. Um, they're skilled in how to best configure and customize your software setup. Um, and cause like I said, everybody's setup is different and they're used to that. They can help you streamline your application, um, improve your internal processes, and even help you improve efficiencies. Sometimes it might be best to shadow your workflow in order to provide you with an analysis of what you could be doing differently, um, or maybe how you could automate some of those manual steps. The consulting team offers all of that. They can, like I said, come on site to your location, COVID allowing, um, or also they can offer remote or online sessions. Consulting is offer hourly and daily options and is very flexible to spread the work over time to fit your schedule. Um, many customers also use our um, consulting to supplement their internal staffing needs by maybe having a monthly retainer with a dedicated consultant. Um, and that can be used to have them participate maybe in your internal company discussions, uh, brainstorming um, or decision planning. That time is also often used to use them as a dedicated soft pro admin um, for managing all of your SP admin needs. Um, who doesn't need that expertise? You know, hey, can I do this? Yes, you can, then do it, go for it. Um, so if, you, if your need for configuration after um, or beyond implementation is just to open up discussions or evaluate your options, then consulting is where you want, will wanna start. 
you can reach our consulting team. Um, there is, like I, you see here, information about that briefly on our SoftPro website, but you can reach them by emailing them at consulting at softprocorp.com. So after all of that, if your need is true customization, um, as in the software doesn't have a function for that or an integration that does what I need, or I wanna rewrite a piece of this altogether, then we do also offer a custom development team. We have one of those and they can assist you with building the right solution for you. Um, oftentimes in configuration and consulting, if what you need would be better served by customization or truly needs it, um, we'll connect you with that team directly. Um, they can also be reached by contacting your sales rep or contacting support. Um, this team, um, they'll be, then be able to kind of work through, define your needs, give you the rest of the possibilities for achieving your goals. Um, and here you'll see just some ideas of some of the things that they've done, um, but truly, and we're talking select now, um, if you need it and it doesn't exist in the software, typically there is a way to do it. Um, web order forms, policy jacket managers, there's calendar integrations, things like that, data imports um, for connecting, um, hyperlinking policies and commitments. So these are just a small batch of some of the things that they can do, um, but they do really, it's pretty broad, the options you have there. Um, now, I am willing to bet that everybody is aware that we have online and on-site training services. You probably went through some training in your initial implementation, um, but did you know you can visit our training solution page on our website? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And at the bottom of each um, is a link where you can request training. So you can request some web-based trainings. Um, we have on-site trainings, we have consulting, um, we also have free training. So if you look under services and training solutions on our website, there are some free training opportunities. Um, and we do put out some monthly webinars, typically they're monthly, that you can view as well. Um, so if your need is for additional training, or maybe we've finished your consulting and configuration of this piece, and you would like custom training for that information to get your users up to speed, that is also available by requesting it um, through our website or connecting with whoever completed your project to get you hooked up with the training team. And we'll work directly with the training team to make sure your specifics are trained. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm sure you are all aware, is that we do offer custom documents and custom report um, development. So, these could be requests ranging from ready docs to word merge docs, maybe a state or underwriting packages, maybe you need a custom crystal report, um, we do HTML docs, um, or even the new Power BI dashboards. Um, if you need custom documents, a lot of times that can also, you know, crossover departments, config, you know, we've been talking about my screens, hey, this also needs to flow to a doc, or you're already talking to the doc team, and now we want to get it on screen. So you'll see, like I said earlier, a lot of crossover between the departments, um, and we, we co-mingle. Um, so if you do just need a custom document or report, you can simply send your request through support. Um, now, if it's applicable, if we're talking about a custom document, custom report, a marked up copy of what you're requesting is extremely helpful. Um, and then we will get that to the appropriate team and they can facilitate um, getting you with a business analyst from that team to review your request, reach out with any questions um, so that you know they can fully understand the scope and needs of your request. And we can work, you know, like I said, within departments to do many pieces that also have to do with those documents and reporting. Um, I actually just got done with one where we customized a report so that we could automate it. So we do, we have a lot of crossover. Um, as a side note, since we're talking about state and underwriter packages and custom documents, and I'm here on my website under our um, reports and docs section, um, when you click on that, you know, it does talk about that a little bit, but we also have a doc portal and I did not mean to move away from that. This is um, currently available for select. Um, this was rolled out, you know, last year 
We are working towards making this new site available to all of our standard and enterprise customers as well. So all you have to do is say visit the doc portal and it will link you through here and you can register to sign up. Um, but the page will direct you to the appropriate site based on your version. Um, and as soon as you're ready to roll um, here, you can customize doc packages. You can download doc packages. So I'm sorry, you can customize notifications for doc packages, sorry. So I can download packages for my particular version. I can get notices or notified when there's a new document package based on underwriter, based on state, maybe the national ones. So you basically subscribe or tell it to notify you when the new packages come in. Um, as soon as we're ready to roll out the new site to our standard and uh, um, enterprise customers, the link will be updated to point you there instead of the current site that hosts the packages for downloads. So if you are a, a classic customer, I just want you to be aware of that. Um, so I do want to just point you back to the links that we just talked about. Um, I've done a lot of talking, so I'll just review your avenues for getting in touch with us. Um, and as I mentioned, most of the services um, can be accessed via our website or by contacting support. Um, but here they are in the slide for you for download after if you need them. Um, so our configuration services, you would go directly through support and they will pass that on. And then we will um, get with you to assess and make sure we have all of the, the criteria for your needs. Make sure we have talked about the best implementation route to go for any of your needs. Um, and that you know, includes you know, automation, screens, template management, custom order rules, formulas, new profiles, pretty much everything that can be or you, know, you see in, in your software. Um, jacks of all trades, masters of none, I like to say. And I see a typo. Um, also, consulting services. You, know, you don't know what you don't know. You want an analysis of what, how you're working now um, just to see if there's anything you, you didn't think of. Um, you know, you're moving into a new state, purchasing additional company, or you just want somebody to be your at, you know, your SP admin um, for you for a while, or somebody kind of just sitting there that you can bounce things off of quickly. Um, email them at consulting at softprocorp.com. Custom development um, for those, you know, add-on items, third-party vendor integrations, and data imports, anything you can think of that doesn't currently exist and select. Um, you can go straight to our website and or you know you can always contact your sales rep for that and then we talked about the links for our training services web-based on-site and we have a link to the free webinars um, how would I get custom documents and record reports and then of course a link to that doc portal so that you can download your own documents underwriter packages state packages load them in yourself you do not have to go through support for that um, and also be notified uh, when those are updated. So we just talked about that. Um, that was a lot of information, I know, but I am done with my presentation. That is everything I have to present you with. Hey, Brandy. Oh, yeah. Hey, so I was just wondering, um, I know some questions that we've had is regarding to profiles. Can you kind of just explain a little bit what a profile is and how somebody can have you know, multiple and if they wear different hats and just kind of how that works a little bit? Sure. Um, so profiles um, are, we talk, we, we can actually have them in select. It's called profiles. Um, in classic, we kind of refer to them as cost centers, but we'll talk about select a little bit more and I can kind of jump you over to my select. Um, so profiles basically are where your orders live. Um, and those profiles control what users have access to those orders, where the orders are created. You know, um, we have some visibility options within profiles. So if we look at this one, for example, um, I have different profiles by state, which means I can separate my 1099ing for those profiles. I can separate my order numbering for those profiles. Maybe orders that are opened up in each of those need a separate trust account. Um, you know, maybe they need separate document tree structures, things like that. Um, so profiles are used for kind of managing and grouping your orders um, and controlling what they see. Um, I can restrict, uh, like I said, kind of 
visibility and access for profiles. Um, so that would be a good example of why I would need separate profiles. I need to keep A, B, and C users out of this profile. They only have access to, say, New York. They're not going to work in North Carolina. Or um, I see a lot with, I brought on another entity, and the new entity's users only need access to their, you know, their orders. My current entity's users only need access to their orders. You would separate those by profile so you can lock them down. You don't have to. It's, it's sort of open, depending on how your, your business model is, um, but it does give you that flexibility. The other thing we can separate by profiles if you're working orders out of different profiles is lookup tables. So, you know, do my North Carolina people really need to see New York attorneys and New York real estate agents, things like that. We can separate lookup tables by profiles as well. So we use profiles to fine tune the structure of select and how our order is processed and what we see and who can see it within ProForm. Hopefully that made sense. It did, um, actually, a lot of sense. Somebody asked, um, could you go through another example of my screens view? Sure. So let's just look straight in select. Um, so when you're in the order, when you initially open it, um, you know, we default to our soft pro screens. So my screens, if you create separate sets, you assign them to groups of people. So maybe my escrow officers need one group. Maybe my order entry people need another group. Um, and then when you're in the order, those specific users will only see the sets of screens that they have been given permission to. So maybe my order entry people only see order entry screens and I have very seriously pared this down. So literally, they work off of these three screens. It gives them just what they need to put their order in and get out, okay? Now, regardless of whether you customize screens or not and assign those to users, everybody can always get back to the soft pro screens, which is the full list. But typically, we try to do my screens. Like I said, it's most common to do it by job functionality, right? My order entry people only need to see these screens. My title people don't need my escrow and closing section, right? Let's just make this more streamlined for how they process the order and only give them the fields that they need, the screens that they need. So when we talk about customizing the my screens, um, you can rename the sections if you want. We can rearrange the sections. We can move the screens around and put any of these screens in any section in any order we can rename any of these screens if you don't like that it says you know property we can say you know collateral or something fun like that um, within the screen we can remove fields that they're not using or don't need to see we can add fields in like i could take a field off of you know i could take my commitment legal description and put it right here on express order entry if i needed to so there is quite a bit of flexibility in how you see the screens within your order so that it becomes more efficient for how you and your users are processing those orders. And just to clarify, that's on a user basis, like a profile? It's on a group basis, actually. Group. So, okay. Yeah, so you assign it to groups. You don't actually have, they, they get loaded into your database um, or your system, and then you say, these groups have permission to see these screens, these screen sets. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so we do a lot of like sort of taking away out of the screens, but if they realize they really needed that, you can always get back to the software screens and we can tweak. And um, I also see a lot of screens, and this was in the slides, but I'll show you again. This was a particularly fun one where like they just wanted to process this hold harmless doc right here with a bunch of check boxes instead of having to run it through the doc. Um, so we see a lot where I have this doc and I would really rather just enter all the information on one screen, go down the line and be done and my doc is prepared when I get over there. Uh, we do a lot with that too. So essentially they're getting rid of prompts and they're then having that information retained in the file. Exactly. Smart. Very smart. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone asked, and I know the answer, but you might know better how to direct them, but somebody asked, if there's um, any cost, additional cost for configuration services, which I know there is, um, but I, would they be best to reach out to their sales rep? Um, I'm sure they have some information that we can send them and such. 
Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think to put that in the slideshow, but I can tell you. Yeah, so um, configuration, so the building out of these items um, is billed hourly. So typically what we'll do when we get a new project via support or sales or implementation or whoever it is, because um, we're talking about beyond implementation. So you've used your package, maybe you've been using it for years, right? Um, so additional configuration items are build hourly, but we will sit down with you first before we do anything and give you all of your options, go through the best option. We can usually give you about a ballpark of what we think it would be, um, how long it would take for us to you know, build and deliver the items that you need, because everything's a little bit different. Um, but the configuration rate is 125 an hour, unless it's something that involves coding. So um, the code snippets for Automation can use some code snippets. I didn't talk about that much, but special Python coding for automation. And we would always disclose this to you if we think it's gonna need it. Um, automation can use coding. The other thing that always uses coding is the custom order rules. Those are billed at 175 an hour. Um, and what we'll typically do is once we've narrowed down and pinpointed absolutely everything that you need from us is we'll give you sort of a ballpark. We'll say, you know what, I don't think this is gonna take more than two hours. Um, we'll send you a quote, we'll write it up. It's very specific when we write it up, which is why we always do the discovery call with you um, to make sure that we know exactly what you're asking us to do. Um, and we'll send over a quote to you for you to approve. And what happens is you're actually not billed until we complete the work and deliver it. So we might quote two hours, but maybe it only took us one in the end. So you're only actually charged for what we actually use. So you would only be charged for the one in that instance. Um, but we keep you up to date on all of that stuff as we're going through the project. Okay, great. Uh, someone had a really good question and it says, does adding customization slow down the program at all? Um, so if we talk about, the general answer is no. Um, if we talk about automations and you know formulas, templates, things like that, absolutely, you know, no. Um, formulas don't slow anything down. They're just copied into the order. They just work. Um, templates, things like that. My screens don't slow anything down. Um, where we talk about maybe seeing it takes automation maybe a little bit more time to process is if we have an automation that is heavily laden with code snippets. Um, but I, I really haven't seen much of that, to be honest. It's not usually that intense. Um, so automations can, they don't slow the system down, it can just slow the automation down. So that's probably a better foot clarification. Um, same with customer or custom order rules, they don't typically slow the program down. Um, they're pretty much instantaneous. They get tacked onto all of your orders. If we put in, you know, your custom errors and warnings and things like that, it gets tacked onto your, er your order and it just knows that, hey, now I need to process this. So th the long answer or short answer is no, not really. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I would. I just want to reiterate, I know it seems a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're not the technical person in your office, but the reason why we wanted to highlight this is because we get requests all the time um, for people who want to, uh, you know, kind of customize it or cut back on clicks or why do I have to see these screens? We don't even do this in our state. And we thought by highlighting this and um, the services and that you, if you have someone technical enough, of course, within your company, that's great. But if not, um, we can obviously help you guys out with that. And the long term result of that is generally always going to be a more efficient, quicker process with a lot less clicks. Um, whether it be through automation or this screen that Brandy has up right now, you know, prompts, uh, people just don't love them all the time. And, you know, if it's something that they have to do on every single document, being able to put it in right here and have it saved that data right within your file and not have to go through the prompts to see it. Um, that's a huge time saver and, and a lot of people opt for these type of options. So um, I don't think we have any more questions. So I, I wanna thank you, Brandy. This was really informative and we may have some follow-up questions. So we'll reserve that right to, to reach back out to Brandy. I would like to say that um, and Mr. Dan Van Fleet did mention that Brandy is the best. So I do think that's worth noting that somebody put that out there. <laughs> I'll take um, that. Right, of course. So we thought today would be fun. Um, Brandy has a recipe she loves to cook, and she has a recipe that she thought she would share. Um, so I'm going to let her tell you about it, and then I'll uh, kind of close things up. Sure. 
Um, I added this. This is like my default go to whenever I just just need a quick something. Um, it's the yummiest chicken. It's always moist. It's super easy to prepare. There's not that many recipes. It's also very like food sensitivity friendly. I have a lot of food sensitivities. So this is just sort of a boom dinner <laughs> done. Um, it's my honey glazed tarragon chicken. It's just fantastical. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. I was on mute. <laughs> uh, thanks, Brandy. I cannot no try it. As most of you know, since you join us week to week, I love to cook. I cook all the time. Um, we love to hear if you've tried recipes, so just email me. Um, if you have any you want to share with me, I'm always looking for new stuff. I cook all the time. I have a family of five, uh, three very hungry kids that like to eat. So uh, with that, I think we will go ahead and close out today's webinar. And um, just remember, we'll send a follow-up email with a recap. You'll get a link to this actual presentation if you wanna review it. Um, if you have any questions, I know that you might have some questions as far as who like who did she say to get in touch with or something like that, please just reach out. Um, we're happy to put you in touch with whoever you need or just answer any questions. Maybe it's something you've thought about, but you still have some more questions. We can help you with that as well. Or maybe you do have a tech person that you want to talk to us and we can certainly do that too. So um, please feel free to reach out. Please let us know if you have any questions. Again, I wanna thank Brandy for all this great information and for your time. And with that, we will see you in a couple weeks. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Leslie.